Are you thinking about moving from New York to Massachusetts? Using the most recent stats, the number one state that people relocated to Massachusetts from was New York. I'm going to try to keep it as much as a state versus state comparison as I can. And I think I may definitely have to do a Manhattan versus Boston comparison as well in the future. Especially since I moved to Boston from New York. Let's talk about a comparison of these two states and give you a little bit of what to expect if you're considering making the move from New York to Massachusetts. But first, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you're new to the channel, then I appreciate you hitting that like button and considering subscribing as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gups. And if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then you should definitely reach out as well. And second, Let's set the record straight. New York is not part of New England. Okay, let's talk about the cost as the first category. As two northern states, neither are exactly a bargain to live in. Generally speaking, the more north of New York that you go, well, the better value you get. Or the less expensive it is, I should say. Similarly, and generally speaking, the more west you go in Massachusetts, then the less expensive it becomes. The Boston area, and really the eastern coast of Massachusetts, is the epicenter of expense, just like New York City is for the state of New York. Now, we're going to talk about the difference in taxes shortly, as this was a major difference that I personally noticed and really enjoyed when I made the move to Massachusetts. Now, NerdWallet.com has a cost of living calculator, and they do the calculator for Boston to New York City. They state that the cost of living is 60% higher in New York than it is in Boston. In other words, $100,000 of pre-tax money if you live in Boston is the equivalent to $169,935 in Manhattan. Now, I know I said I was going to try to stay away from a city-to-city -city comparison, but I just thought that one was a very relevant data point. When you look at it from a full state versus state, according to MyLifeElsewhere.com, Massachusetts is 13% more expensive in New than New York. Meanwhile, according to NextBurb.com, the median household income for Massachusetts is $89,645 compared to New York, $74,314. Now let's talk about the housing market, as it's a major part of the cost. Again, using data from NextBurb, the median price for a single family home is $561,403 in Massachusetts, and this is compared to New York's median sales price of $397,093. More than price, there were some other differences that I thought were really worth noting. For example, the average property tax in Massachusetts was $5,351, and this is compared to New York's $5,974. Another interesting stat that I found was that single-family housing stock accounts for 52% of the dwellings in Massachusetts, and this is compared to 42% in New York. Meanwhile, Massachusetts has a 63% home ownership rate compared to 55% for New York. I don't think it's necessarily fair to pick a town in New York and try to compare it to a town in Massachusetts because my general knowledge of towns in New York is, well, to say the least, lacking. What I would say is that if you are looking for some suggestions of areas or towns that could fit your needs, then you should give me a call. Let's talk about what's important to you and your price range, and then I could probably point you in a right direction or two. Now, the big takeaway is that housing in the state of Massachusetts on a whole is more expensive. But if you're doing a Boston Metro versus New York City Metro, then Boston is going to win that competition every day of the week and, well, twice on Sunday. Now, a quick personal note is that I grew up in Delaware. If I had come from Delaware straight to Boston, then my perception would have been, holy mother of pearl, this place is expensive. Instead, I had the sticker shop of going from Delaware to New York City, then New York City to Boston. The pit stop in New York actually reset my housing value chart, if you will. When I came to Boston, I actually thought real estate was cheap because, well, I was used to New York City prices. But let's talk weather. They are relatively equal in that regard. It seems that if you live in the Buffalo or Syracuse area, then you may be glutton for some punishment in the winter months thanks to the Great Lakes. We don't really have that here. When people think of Massachusetts, everyone always brings up cold and harsh winters. Just like if you live in New York, people always immediately assume that, well, you live in New York City. Now, granted, I live off the coast, but I really don't think that they are that bad, the winters. The northern part of the Boston definitely gets more of a snow beating than the southern part of the state, but I really don't think it's that bad, like I said. The big thing is that New York is huge. The weather in New York City is going to be most likely a little different than in Albany, which will probably be a little bit different than Syracuse and Buffalo. I may be a little biased here, but I put this win in the uh, Massachusetts column. But I could easily see how someone would say, this is actually a tie. Now, let's talk taxes. Fun story. My first job was in New York City. 
I thought a city tax was, well, kind of a standard thing. So when I got my second job up here in Boston, I remember spending what would be considered a decent amount of time trying to figure out what the Boston city tax was. And spoiler alert, it was zero. Massachusetts has the nickname of tax Massachusetts, and I think that is a rather unfair nickname. If anything, it should be called Massachusetts. There are small incremental fees all over the place, which, well, let's be honest, are really taxes. Now, it's a death by a million cuts, quite frankly, but let's start with the income tax. Massachusetts is 5%. Massachusetts also has a recently voted in millionaire tax that increases the rate to 9% for anything over a million dollars. Now, New York has nine income tax rates, ranging from 4% to 10.9%. The 4% range actually disappears pretty quickly as a heads up. Now, let's say it this way. If you're making 50 grand a year, then your income tax rate is 5.85%. Now, as I mentioned, there's not a city tax for Boston, but the city of New York does have an additional tax that ranges from 3.078% to 3.876%, plus an additional set amount. As an example, if you make over 50 grand, then you'd also owe 3.876% plus an additional $1,813. And New York State has a sales tax of 4%, and if you live in the city, then you would owe an additional 4.5% plus an additional 0.375% for a metropolitan commuter transportation district surcharge. Man, you just can't make this stuff up. So total sales tax in New York City is 8.875%. In Massachusetts, the sales tax is 6.25%. There's no additional sales tax for the city of Boston. And I found an interesting CNN article that lists tax dollars state by state. It lists New York as the number one state for total taxes per $1,000. This is compared to Massachusetts, which they had ranked as 40th. To be fair, this is because of the low sales and excise tax rankings. When you are just looking at personal income, then New York is, well, still number one, with Massachusetts coming in at number eight. Either way, Massachusetts is not the tax Massachusetts state that it's made out to be. It's not great, but it could definitely be worse. Now, education is one of the most important factors when people are considering a move. School state rankings were, well, a little all over the place. And I think it's important to first say that it's the municipality that you're in that makes the biggest difference in regards to the quality of the school. So that's where you first need to focus. But in the Wallet Hub survey, they rank Massachusetts as number one while New York came in at 13. U.S. News and Re Report had Massachusetts as number two, and New York came in at eight when you're specifically looking at the pre-K through 12th grade rankings. Again, this really comes down to the area that you end up calling home, whether you're in New York or Massachusetts. No matter the state, there are some school districts that, well, just perform better than others. So let's talk about job opportunities in both the states. Now, as economies go, well, New York is a monster, ranking number three in the country with $1.6 trillion in economic output. This is compared to Massachusetts, $544 billion. Currently, the unemployment rate in Massachusetts is 2.6%, and this is compared to 3.9% in New York. Now, the three largest industries by revenue are the drug, cosmetic, and toiletry industries, life insurance and annuities, and then college and universities in Massachusetts. And interestingly enough, hospitals was number four with biotech at number seven. Meanwhile, in New York, number one is the financial services industry. That makes sense. Number two is healthcare, with number three being professional and business services. Fun fact. New York City is the second highest GDP city in the world after Tokyo. Now, a big fiber of the Massachusetts economy is higher education. Yes, it is what is tied to a lot of our economic output, but it's also why a lot of companies set up shop here. With so many colleges, each year there is a large pool of students to recruit from. And these schools include Harvard, MIT, Boston University, Northeastern, and Babson. Sorry, I, just, I had to throw Babson in there. What does the future hold for large cities like New York and Boston? Time? Well, it's going to tell. But as of now, New York City is looking to be more affected by the long-term shift in the way we work after COVID. To round it all out, let's finish it up by talking about what each state has to offer from outdoor activities and general entertainment. Now, I'm biased, but even with my bias, it feels like Massachusetts showed up to a gunfight with a knife on this one. I'm not going to get into the quality of the sports teams, but we can talk about the number. And in New York has two baseball teams, three football teams, two basketball teams, and three hockey teams. As she says, well, we've got one in each of the sport categories. Then there's the art scene, which includes things like plays on Broadway. Massachusetts just can't compete with Broadway and what they have to bring to the table. There's a vast amount of green space in both states. And I will say that New York has ski resorts, and, well, we don't. During the winter months, we actually escape by going up north to areas like New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine for skiing. 
Massachusetts has the Cape and the islands. New York is Long Island and the Hamptons. I actually think Massachusetts takes the win here, personally. But this is also when so many New Yorkers take over New Jersey and enjoy the proximity of their beaches. But one thing that Massachusetts has is more coastline in general, which creates for more amazing hidden gem places to call home. New York has the Great Lakes, and I wholeheartedly admit that I've never been. I have to imagine that they are pretty awesome places just to sit back and enjoy. Now, I guess the important thing to realize is that if you're coming from New York and you've enjoyed everything that they have to offer, then no, Massachusetts, well, it's no slouch either. Boston and New York might be rivals, but there are a lot of great things about Massachusetts if you're considering making the move here. One of the things I personally loved is that Boston, well, it was more of a town. New York is a very vertical. The town feeling was what was right for me. I loved New York. I had an amazing time living there, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. But Boston, it's the place that I love to call home. Now, whether you're looking to relocate to Massachusetts in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you. would love to hear about your goals and also talk to you about what you're looking for in your new home to help offer some suggestions or maybe some possible communities that could be perfect for you. All of my contact information, it's in the description below. But you can also visit me at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill out all of your contact information and I'm going to reach out to you. Whatever works best for you. Until next time.